Chancellor of this university, Professor G. L. Datta, Vice Chancellor Dr. R. Sri Hari Rao, Vice President K. Raja Harin, other dignitaries on the dais, young hero Krishna Madhav, young ladies, young gentlemen, fellow young Indians. I read, I heard recently, or I read recently, that if you don't grow up by the time you're 50 years old, you don't have to at all. And I guess I still have two years to go before I, I also get that privilege of never growing up. I was doing a little bit of research on the net about this event, Samyak. When I was invited at first, I wasn't sure what type of event it was. I've attended a few of these events in various universities. Most of them are purely focused on business, and I thought that this is what this event was going to be as well. I was quite pleasantly surprised to see that it's not just about business. And a few things that in the write-up about Samyak that I wrote down, which I want to share again with you, it talked about networking with diverse students. It talked about creativity and inte intellectualization. It talked about technical, artistic, creative, and managerial skills. And it talked about thinking beyond the horizon is very essential for the overall development of a student. And I really appreciate the thoughts behind this event, and I appreciate the management and the team that has been able to put it together. Congratulations to all of them. I think it's a fantastic event. I hope all of you have been getting all of this value out of the event as much as I enjoyed reading about it. And I only wish I could have participated to understand it a little bit more. The theme, sustainable socio-economic rural development through high-tech intervention, is also a topic very close to my heart, very relevant to the business that I'm in with the Amaraja group. Our core purpose, I think, fits very well with this theme. I mentioned our core purpose earlier with a smaller group. And I thought, since there are so many more people here, let me also repeat it again for your benefit. The core purpose of the Amaraja group is to transform our spheres of influence and to improve the quality of life by building institutions that provide better access to better opportunities, goods and services to more people all the time. And I think that when we sat down several years ago to write down our core purpose, I called it actually a discovery process, discovering, not creating, because the core purpose was always there, right from the day one, when my father came back to India in the early 80s, to set up this small company in a small village near a small town, Tirupati. He came with the intention to create opportunities for rural folks, to create opportunities for people like him who never had opportunities while growing up, to create opportunities in places where they don't have to leave their families, leave their homes, leave their villages, leave everything that's important to them the way we did when we went to America. To create opportunities for people who don't have to lose something in order to get a job. And that's what we call, or we coined the term, non-migratory jobs. And those are the most valuable jobs, and those are the kind of jobs India needs. One term that you might use to this, the theme of yours is very, very good theme, but a little bit long. I thought I would suggest one word that might replace it, and that is urbanization. <clears throat> How to take our rural areas and make them urban. How to bring all the advantages that people in urban areas have to our rural areas. And that is what we can call urbanization. 
Before continuing, I just wanted to ask you a few questions myself. You had your opportunity to ask me, now it's my opportunity to ask a few questions. All you have to do is show your hands, it's all yes. You just, if, you, if, you, if you're part of this group, you just need to raise your hand. How many of you have cell phones? How many of you have smartphones? And how many of you have data plans with those smartphones? How many of you can afford to pay those bills? <laughs> how many of you are from small villages, born and brought up in villages? How many of you are from small towns? How many of you are from large cities? Okay. Just to get to know you a little bit better, thank you. Um, how many of you read newspapers every day? How many of you read English newspapers every day? How many of you read business newspapers every day? How many of you read business magazines every week? How many of you watch television news every day? How many of you watch BBC or CNN every day? Every day? You want me to believe that? How many of you get your news off the internet? <laughs> Quite impressive. That's more hands than I see in my joining class in Namaraja usually. How many of you are on Twitter? Do I have any followers out there? Oh, come on. How many of you are on Facebook? And how about the $16 billion company, WhatsApp? How many of you play sports? I think that's one of the things that's impressed me about this university more than anything else, is the amount of extracurricular activities that I've seen. It's very important. In my opinion, it's as important, equally important, if not more important than what you learn in class is what you learn on the field. I believe that learning is not a period in one's life. It's not when you're going to school, it's not when you're going to college. But learning has to become a way of life for the rest of your life. And to keep learning, you basically need just two things. One is, you cannot be arrogant. Intellectually arrogance will, the day you become intellectually arrogant where you feel you have nothing to learn, well guess what? You won't have anything to learn. You will not learn anything after that. So don't be arrogant. Be open, be curious. And the second thing is you have to leave your comfort zone. You have to meet new people, see new things, have new experiences. Do something every day that scares the hell out of you. These are the two ingredients to always be learning. You can't be arrogant and you have to leave your comfort zone. As long as you're prepared to, these two, do, to do these two things, you will be learning for the rest of your life. There's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi I wanted to share with you. As you're all growing, these are words of wisdom that you should remember. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values 
Your values become your destiny. These are great words from a great man, the father of our country. Since we ended his quote with values, I want to talk a little, about, little bit about the Amar Raja values, what we call the Amar Raja way. We have five values. Each of them we associate with the five elements of nature, the Panchabhutalu. And we also associate with five mind states that are required to exhibit those values. The first, innovation, associated with space, limitless, like space, for which you need a synthesizing mind in order to innovate. So if you got the picture, right? Value, element, mind state. It's going to be the format that I follow for the rest of the five. The second is excellence. Like wind, it lifts all our pursuits. And you need a disciplined mind in order to achieve excellence. The third, entrepreneurship. Like fire, like the creative energy of fire. Fire, again, uses the creative mind state. To create, you need creative mind state. The fourth is experiences. Like water, we immerse ourselves in our experiences. We learn from our experiences. And for that, we need a spiritual mind state. And the fifth, responsibility. Like the earth, it grounds us. And for that, we need an ethical and respectful mind state. So these are our values that we follow every day in our business. And to remember them, all you need to remember are the five elements of nature. And if you want to read about the mind states that I mentioned, there's a book called Five Minds for the Future by Howard Gardner, psychologist from Harvard. I would suggest all of you download it and do read that book because it will equip you for your future as well. Now I want to say something that might be a bit controversial to say at a university, but I believe that knowledge, knowledge is overrated and skills are underrated. Let me explain why I believe knowledge is overrated. It's important, I'm not saying it's not. But what you learn, and those are skills, and these are things that are going to last you a lifetime. Skills like communication skills, negotiation skills, persuading skills, leadership and teamwork skills, and musical, physical, acting skills. All of these are skilled these if you are able to master any few of these you will succeed beyond your imagination so focus on skills get the knowledge but really focus on skills that's my advice to you now to talk a little bit about what's happening in our country. I'm not going to get into the politics, but I just want to talk about some ideas. There's a lot of talk and a lot of debate going on about rights. What rights do people have? Right to information, right to education, right to food, and so many other rights. But nobody is talking about responsibility. Sure, we need to have rights, but with those rights also come responsibilities. And who is talking about responsibilities? Please don't forget about what you're responsible for. What you're responsible to yourself to start with, your responsibility to your family, to your society, to the environment. These are things that Nobody has to give to us, but what we need to give 
to each other to take this nation forward. These are very turbulent times, very historic times in India and the world, and especially for us in Andhra Pradesh. The economies are weak everywhere. India was sustaining its growth despite that until the last few years. From our independence, we were stuck at the Hindu rate of growth below 3%, 4%, never crossing 5%. But we finally broke through. After the first phase of liberalization, we were able to get to 7%, 8%, 9%. And we looked like we were really rocking. But then what happened? What happened to that growth? We've been distracted by too many things that are unimportant, by politics. We've been distracted from focusing on what's important, poverty alleviation, empowerment, growing jobs, creating opportunities, and getting back to that 7% to 9% growth, which is required if we have to get rid of poverty in this country. If we're not growing at 9%, we're going backwards. If we go below 7%, we're going backwards. We're not, go we're not even standing still. We're going backwards. And that's what we need to focus on. How do we get our growth to 9% so that everyone in this country won't have to talk about rights because they will be having everything that they need themselves. They won't have to be worrying about all of this other nonsense. What's holding us back is inadequate policies, inaction, corruption. These are the issues that we need to think about. With the upcoming elections, I think as young men and women, this is what we need to be thinking about. Who can help us to get back on track? Who can provide us dynamic leadership? Who will get us away from the political games that people have been playing by all national parties who have secret deals with their local units? There's a son in Delhi. There's another son in Andhra with no experience, no track record, making deals between themselves. What we need, what we need is leadership with vision, leadership with experience, leadership with a track record in Delhi and in Andhra. People who have built their states into world-class who have uplifted the poor, who have built infrastructure, who are concerned more about the quality of life. We need people like this to build a new Andhra Pradesh, better and stronger than any other state in this country. And the enterprising spirit of the people of Andhra Pradesh I refuse to call it by the other name. The people of Andhra Pradesh are going to rebuild this state to a level beyond anybody's imagination. And we're going to do it by not being focused on one city. Being one city focused, we've understood the danger of that. We're going to do it by building the entire state the way that we talked about, the way that this theme talks about, by uplifting the people in all the regions, people in villages, people in small towns, people in cities, all of you who are out there, who raised your hands, you'll have a chance to go back home to your families with the kind of world-class opportunities that you deserve. We need high-tech jobs and low-tech jobs. So, in closing, I talked about young Indians and we have a baseline in young Indians. We can and we will. So I want everybody to keep thinking that. We can and we will.
And when you go vote, and please, please vote on election day. Vote for leaders who can make this happen and who will make this happen. Thank you very much. Jay Hind.